Pod 9J. We out here. Nickel, nickel. Yee! C-Dub on the beat. Slide through that city, made that Chevy swerve. The bank account jumping, gotta do a twerk. Keep hating like you is and get your feelings hurt. I got the 10 cent low, letting semi burst. Hey yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When you got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Breaking news, let's get right into the video. Let's talk about it. You guys already know I was the first one. Thanks, thanks to all my subscribers, the other ones that always provide me with the information right then and there, and I get on my job. So let's get into the video. With that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up, and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and see all my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time, but most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. Now today was a crackdown. It was an operation called Silent Cadence. I don't know what the silent cadence is for, but you know what I mean? You know, you know how law enforcement is all they throw around ideas, and that one was the... I mean, I don't know. It's oxymoron. It's silent, but it's a cadence. You know, cadence is a loud, uh, repetitive rhythm, I guess, or whatever. Today, it was announced that federal charges were going to be against 10 gang members and that were getting snatched up. Four fugitives are still on the run facing, you know, violations of the RICO Act, narcotic selling, uh, was I think it was attempted murders, and the death of an innocent bystander. One of the shootings was a was a bystander was a woman that was getting targeted. That actually got hit. So gang violence erupted, and a woman was gunned down. She was shot to death by just you know just being around at the wrong place at the wrong time when individuals were trying to gun down a, a confidential informant who was snitching on the gang, missed the target, and took an innocent woman's life in the process. All behind the gang violence. But a gang member from Quiet Village and EMF, you know, the individual shot at two cops, killing two cops, and he was killed in the process as well, gunned down by officers. His face is on the screen right here. All this was behind a domestic violence call. Now, you know, I'm, I'm against domestic violence, but, you know, it happens, bro. It happens. You and your old lady get into a fight. She might put tips on you. You might overreact, or you're just the kind of type of person that likes to beat on your old lady. But it was a small argument. That blew out of proportion to the point that officers got involved. And the individual, for some reason, on his own accord, decided to react and kill two cops in the process. Two cops in the line of duty. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to be like, oh, bro, you're siding with the cops. No. Two cops that were doing their jobs probably went over there to defuse the situation. And they're going to conduct, you know, police law. They're going to enforce the law. They're going to enforce police protocol. To, you know, stop everybody from fighting and arrest whoever is, you know, responsible for the domestic case. Whatever the case may be, they were just doing their job. And this individual decided to say, you know what, I'm not going to jail. I'm not, you're not placing me in handcuffs for what could have been a misdemeanor or a quick, small, you know, felon, uh, felony case. And he took two cops' lives that were in the line of duty and they lost his life in the process. All behind a domestic violence case. Think about it. So obviously with two cops involved, they're going to deliver a measure of justice. And a, and a heavy blow to the street gang. And they're also going to target Whittier too as well. They're identifying it as a Vario Whittier Locos. That's these two gangs, you know, work in unison. They got a good, you know, communication, uh, a loose alliance on the streets. So this is going to be an ongoing operation that's going to target a lot more gang members. So, you know, gang members in the house right now bolting the windows, bolting the doors, digging up the backyard, throwing everything underneath the doghouse. I, if I was you, I'd be, I'd be, right, I'd be in Mexico right now or Hong Kong like, yeah, I'm free. Come get my passport. But obviously with the four fugitives that are on the loose, they're going to be facing narcotics charges, weapons and firearms trafficking, and RICO indictments. So obviously, you know, El Monte Flores, I mean, they were putting it down. But think about it. It was the result of this individual killing two cops that forced these into uh, the police department's hand, which they probably had all this in motion. They were probably going to do it whenever they were going to do it, whenever the things got really hot, the streets got hot, and they finally said, you know what, we got plenty right now to, to take these off, dudes off the streets for a while. You know, gang, gang sweeps and street operations and indictments, they don't happen overnight, they take time. So I'm pretty sure now that they have a sufficient amount of evidence to indict all these individuals on federal charges, federal, that means a lot of these people are going to be going to the feds, some are getting charged with local charges, either way. You can only get away with crime for so long. So obviously there was an attempted murder done of a, of, a, of, a, of a rival gang member. 
And obviously they didn't hit the target of the, the confidential informant who's probably going to come forward after this and just really say, since you almost tried to kill me, I got something for you. Oh, Yo, yeah, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk loud. I'm going to be obnoxiously loud in the interrogation room, okay? Yeah, you're going down, bud. But a woman lost her life in the process. May she rest in peace. Just happened to be in the same area this individual was when they decided to hop out and shoot at him out of the vehicles and get back in the vehicles. They probably realized it took another woman's life. So you know that had to weigh heavy on their conscience that they didn't hit the primary target. This target got loose. Probably was one of the responsible ones that said, you know what, I'm going to set this whole operation to infect. Man, I got a loud mouth, Craig. I got a big mouth, Craig. And then, at that, they took down a casita, a casino. You know, these casinos are ran by these Mexican mafia members. So obviously, somebody lost out on a lot of profit. They probably gained a lot of profit, but you know, somebody locked up right now, or, or that's a Mexican mafia member responsible for this area, is pissed off that he can't generate money from this little casita. Pretty sure he has more than he can rely on. But you're, you're honestly, you put a dent in his money. And I don't think uh, the black can really likes when you mess with their money and bringing heat to their bodies like that. The main defendant that's involved in this case, his name is Chase Carrillo, a.k.a. Sicko. He's actually the shot caller of Quiet Village. And he got into an altercation with a rival gang member. That resulted in him and the shot caller from Vario Video Locos. His name was Ronnie Rojas. Both these individuals wind up gunning down this rival gang member. Shot him eight and ten times. Eight to ten times, should I say. But the dude survived. So, you know, luck of the draw. Them bullets weren't bouncing everywhere in that boy's body. So there was a report that they wind up getting a, getting a hold of, these two gang members, right? And obviously the report identified a particular person that was snitching on the case. And uh, they pretty much had Maria Garcia from Vario Whittier Locos pass this, to the, to the, pass this around to the homies and say, hey, but we got to get this fool. You know, they pretty much sanctioning this man's murder. So they wind up getting a vehicle. From a, from a credit card that uh, Maria Garcia stolen, copped a vehicle, seen the suspected CI in a vehicle with another woman, started shooting at the vehicle, missed the informant, but wound up killing the woman in the process. But obviously, there's a lot of people that are in this case that are involved. You know, obviously, the shooters tried to get rid of the ghost gun. And when they brought up the fact that she, the, 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 the primary target was in the car with another woman... He was reportedly saying, and I quote, sometimes you got to take matters into your own hands. So basically, he just undermined the fact that this individual that he was trying to kill was in a vehicle with another woman. That wasn't going to stop him from taking this man's life and anybody's life in the process as long as the matter got resolved to stop this individual from snitching. So what does that say? Gang leaders in down south pretty much said, look, but whoever gets hit in the process, oh, well, we have a, we have a job to do. We want to stop this man from stitching, and whoever else gets caught in the crossfire, oh well. Casualties of war, right? Following that, they want him smacking the casita. Raided it. Found it involved in a lot of illegal activities. A quiet village gang member was identified and documented named Richard Guzman. From, for selling crystal meth. They did a lot of transactions in that little casitas, and they were selling heavy weight of crystal meth. That's where the trafficking charges come from. He was caught selling out of this casitas, and that's part of the, that's, this is part of the indictment that they're talking about. They actually had connects to Kansas City, right? And so it was a 43-year-old gang member from Kansas City drove seven pounds of crystal meth fresh off the boat. I will say out, out the trailer park or the, the mobile home, wherever the hell they cooked that shit at. Drove it all the way to this casita with the intent to sell, and these guys were going to pick it up and distribute it all within their local neighborhood. And then, lo and behold, one of, the, one of the shooters gets charged again while he's in the county jail because he had a relative smuggling opium as a box in to sell and whatever opiums he could bring in for the intent to generate money and, and distribute. And, you know, there goes another trafficking charge. So the moral of the story is another gang sweep, another crackdown. A lot of individuals, dangerous individuals, have been taken off the streets and they're going to continue to do so, like I, like I said. Vario Whittier Locos, they're saying it's next on the list. So um, shout out to all my subscribers from Whittier, but y'all be safe out there. But just look at the prime example and what this individual is that's going to be documented. It's going to be court documented that these, he said. He said, bro, when they addressed him about the woman, he was like, bro, sometimes you got to take matters into your own hands. So it makes me wonder, are these individuals that are actual gang leaders of these Vario's, are they going to answer for that in county jail by the black hand for killing an innocent woman? 
for getting one of their casitas hits, which is only a matter of time, bro. So that's really nobody's fault. But sure enough, they got hit. And somebody lost out on a lot of money. And nobody's in some, that, and that somebody's not going to like the fact that they just lost out on a lot of money. But look at how careless people are becoming. He's in a vehicle with another person. You can't just run up to the vehicle, open the door, and tell him, hey, can you roll down the window real quick? Bam, bam. Nah, they just started shooting at the vehicle. It doesn't matter who was in there. If they didn't care if a woman was in there, imagine if there was a baby in the backseat. They probably wouldn't care either. And this would have been another maxing road tragedies all over again. Innocent bystanders are getting killed. Now, mind you, a lot of people say on my YouTube comment section, hey, it's whatever. Gang members killing gang members. Let them take each other out, man. Clean the streets by themselves. They can clean the streets with each other. That's fine. But when other people start getting involved is when you start to think about this gang violence and how serious, how much of this bloodshed is, 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 is transferring over to regular society, regular civilians that don't have no part of this, who don't want no part of this, who don't, be, who don't belong around this, but most importantly, never got involved and yet become victims because of it. So we're talking 10 defendants getting indicted on attempted murder charges, murder charges, trafficking, narcotics, firearms conspiracy because they were actually circulating this paperwork about this snitch and then you got four fugitives on the run with the i don't give a mentality who probably gonna cause a lot more ruckus before they before they get busted all because one man got a domestic violence case pending on him and didn't want to go to jail so he retaliated on two officers and officers lost their lives so everybody to all my subscribers out there man be safe man i had to be the first to report this man everybody be safe on the streets man look out for your surroundings man keep your family close and uh and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.